I think I sent it to y'all before. What's going on, everybody? Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. How you doing? As you can see, we have a full, full cast tonight. And of course, you know, we don't upgrade it just a little bit. Some backgrounds changes a little bit. You know, I'm a little red on mine, but that's all right. You know, but reporting from front of Mercedes Benz Stadium. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? <laughs> Miss Maggie T is up in here, up in here. And who's at the top left? You said enough for me, already. <laughs> you already know who it is. Oh, here he go. Here he go. <laughs> oh, I see some yeah. upset people. <laughs> we got to talk about the old Jones. <laughs> Don't scare the children, sir. Don't scare the children. That's all right. It ain't Halloween yet. <laughs> now, who's right next to him? Uh, uh, some people may call me the biggest A white there's ever been in the Atlanta Falcons niche. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm the monster, the big bad wolf, the mad scientist. Um, hey man, I, I, I guess my name is Mad Mike today. If I'm allowed to be Mad Mike, <laughs> all right, Mad Mike, who's next to him? Yo, 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 it's Twisted Torch TV back again. What's up to all the AFN crew, everybody that's in the chat? We live on to the next one. Let's get it. Let's get it. Who's below? K Styles right there. Who is that? Who is that? It's the Twitch God. It's been a minute that I've been on here, but what's up, y'all? How y'all doing? What's going on? And of course, right next to me. They call me the calm before the storm, aka Juju on that beat. <laughs> or as K uh, Styles would say, Juju to the bank. That's Juju right. You talk sports. <laughs> what's up, everybody? <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna go ahead and get into the, the meat because we about tired of it. So we're gonna just jump right on in because that's what everybody wanna hear us talk about. We didn't do a live last night. We did a video, but we already knew that everybody was gonna be on here waiting on our reaction. What's good? Let's go ahead and shout out some people in the chat before we even get to that. Let's go ahead. I see Jamil McCall. What's up, Atlanta Nation? Georgia Red Clay. Okay, Georgia. All right, Joseph Thornton. I see Michael Walker, Robbie White. What's going on, Robbie? <laughs> Tony Wright, Asia. What's up, girl? Space Sphere, how you doing? William Amy, DJ, how y'all doing? Speed Falcons for Life. It's a lot of y'all, so of course I can't get to everybody, but we'll get to you when we get there. But K Styles, can we see your face, please? <laughs> Where you going? How you doing, Tony? How you doing? What up, Tony? Give Fuego some love. Show me. Yeah, good, Tony. Right. That's you sure? right. You sure they want to see my face? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my god. All, All right. right. So let's get on it. Did we? What banners? Where the banners at, y'all? Did we put up anything? We probably didn't do a thing. Girl, what's up being in producer mode live on the show? <laughs> I thought we had banners. But anyway, it's about Julio Jones. How about that? I thought we had a little banner to be all fancy, but I guess not because y'all ain't prepared. So let's go. Let's go. What y'all think about it? <laughs> <sighs> I'm going to go. I'm, I, I want to go last because I have a lot to cover. I'm going to be all over the place. I'm going to be real. I'm going to be for really real with everybody in here. I'm going to be all over the place. Let's start here. Right, let, let's start here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to start it out. Um, I, I'm going to just say this. All right. We're going to say this and kind of piggyback off of where I'm going. Um, the first thing that I really want to talk about is one thing that have come out that I think a lot of people are a little bit in their feelings about because it leads to a question for me personally, and I want everybody's thoughts on it. And um, 
this question is why in the heck are you capping for Dan Quinn? Why are you, Julio Jones, a capping for Dan Quinn the way it is being reported? We're talking about, I mean, not even reported. We've we we've seen what you know Julio said. Like he's been behind Dan Quinn like no other. Like he hasn't been behind um Raheem Morris, Dirk Cutter. I don't think he's been behind Matt Ryan the way he's capped for Dan Quinn. And like it's come out that Julio Jones, uh, when the Falcons fired Dan Quinn, that's when the relationship went south. So why in the bloody, uh, as my UK family may say, why in the bloody hell is Julio capping for Dan Quinn? So I guess we'll start with K Styles and then we'll hit it to uh, uh, twist. All right. I actually got a couple pictures for this, so 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 okay. people can understand what is going on here. Let me repeat. Tennessee got Julio Jones. Falcons get the 2022 second rounder and 2023 fourth rounder. But the key thing is the Tennessee Titans got all of his salary. What does that mean? That means the draft class can finally get paid. I'm just saying it like this. Okay, he go to Tennessee. He's ended up in the same exact situation he just got traded from. <laughs> when you actually look at it. Now, you got some people out here that's going to say, well, the Falcons lost this deal and they look stupid. And we got Fox Sports 1 painting this narrative like Julio was the victim of this trade and ESPN talking about, well, the Falcons are stupid. I'm going to let y'all motherfuckers know. Hold on. Said we're supposed to be professional. Let me let me calm my tone. I'm gonna let y'all know. I'm gonna get a lot of flat for this. But I feel like the Atlanta Falcons actually won this trade. Why? Because now that puts us on the bottom of the total pole as far as the media. They already had us below below average to suck. And with Julio gone, we definitely below average to suck in their eyes. Which takes a lot of the pressure off the team. Now all the other players have to step up. But mm -hmm. me personally, I don't give two fucks. That way. That's all I gotta say. That way. You better do like do like Quavo and them do in the videos, bitch. That way. All right, I'm done. <sighs> Look, Look man, it's it's on me. Look, at the end of the day, Julio is Julio. He made his decision. He got to stick with it. He's going to a situation that he doesn't know what the outcome's gonna be because their defense might be worse than ours. They have, they have a chance to be worse than ours. And you're talking about Ryan Tannehill. Like, he's going based off of Derrick Henry running the ball 24-7. I don't know what he really can do, if we're being honest. Is he going to be able to do them back shoulder passes? Is he going to be able to throw on precision before Julio Jones gets off his cut? I don't see that. It's going to take some time. Hell, he had Corey Davis and, and A.J. Brown. He wasn't throwing them routes with them. So I don't know how that's going to be good with Julio. Now, going towards uh, Mike's question with uh, Dan Quinn and Julio fighting for Dan Quinn. I got to call a spade a spade here. Dan Quinn let Julio do whatever Julio Jones wanted to do. Uh -huh. The Falcons, at the end of the day, made sure certain, certain situations with Julio didn't get if Julio didn't feel like practicing, he wasn't practicing. If Julio didn't feel like going to minicamp or OTAs, he didn't go. 
with Dan Quinn, he could do that. If he's not feeling like practicing, he could do that. No one shamed him as far as the fans, as far as the players. Everybody was cool with it. So that's one reason why with the Dan Quinn situation. This guy was a captain for us last year. We got to remember that. He was a captain. Right now, the way that situation played out, it don't look good to me personally. Um, I understand the players are all shouting them out. That's one thing about Lance's organization. All the players here, like, we show love to the players that's gone. It's never no hatred, anything like that. They can feel a certain type of way, but they're not going to say that. So he's going to a tough situation. Good luck to him. Um, I went on my rant yesterday. Um, I'm pretty much done with it based on how that situation went because he ain't finna say nothing to us, as, as you see. He got off the air, he got off the jet and blew already. It blew already in smiles. Smiling. Oh, limping. Limping. He was oh, limping. He was limping with a check. He limping with a check. Ain't worried about nothing. He got exactly what he wanted. We really, we really traded him to a place he wanted to go. You can't you can't say nothing bad about us, man. You can't. Matt Ryan, he made his statement right after. Didn't second guess it or nothing. You saw how it looked. I know who is not gonna make no statement. Uh like my brother uh, Michael Walker in the chat, he said Twister said we have talent. I did say that we do got a lot of talent. I look forward to Matt Ryan spreading the ball around the field and um, not having to focus on one player. Use your eyes, and he's good at that, so I'm not worried. And with Arthur Smith being the new offensive coordinator, he's going to help Matt Ryan's game just like Kyle Shanahan did, and he's Matt Ryan's going to also help his game because he knows people are already hunting for him. So that's a chip on his shoulder. I don't trust. I don't trust. <laughs> I don't trust no QB with a chip on their shoulder after getting disrespected by their fans, the city, and the outside media. I, I feel sorry for these defenses that got to face Matt Ryan this year. That's all I'm gonna say. Who got it? Who got it? I want me to go. Let's go to y'all. Yeah, not gonna. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So I'm gonna answer my question. He says, "Why is Julio Jones captain for Dan Quinn?" And personally, I think the whole issue with Dan Quinn being let go, Julio feeling a certain type of way about it, twisted hit the nail on the head. Dan Quinn was a player's coach, and I told on my channel I said this numerous times after we made the Super Bowl. The worst thing that ever happened to the Falcons in 2016 was get into that Super Bowl when nobody expected us to. Because in Dan Quinn's eyes, he looked at those players as championship players. He know that the coach, uh, coaching is what felt that team and that they deserved to win that championship. And in his head, he could never see any fault, any fault in those players that was on that championship roster that made it to the Super Bowl. That was our biggest Ooh. issue. Him and Thomas Dimitrov. Like we talk about the players that got paid, Mike always talks about Robert Alford. We talk about the true font, uh, Deion Jones, all the guys that were on that or was a part of that core unit that got paid after they lost that Super Bowl. And you guys know I hate the New England Patriots. But one thing I love about Bill Belichick, he wants you to get the job done. The Falcons didn't get the job done in 2016. We didn't win the Super Bowl. And one thing about Bill Belichick, he keeps his foot on his player's neck. Like, he doesn't fall in love with players, and that's what pissed off Tom Brady, and that's why Tom Brady left. All Bill Belichick cares about is production, and that's and that's the difference between a coach like him and a coach like Dan Quinn, who's a player's coach. A lot of the times when you have a player's coach, they can see no wrong. Even when you're when there's drop-off in your game, they're not going to criticize you. How many times do we see after games Dan Quinn say the same exact thing after every single game? We're going to get it right. We're going to do better. But you never seen him bench a player. You never seen him cut a player after a game. And that was the main issue. And that's why we said that the regime that we had, the last regime that we had, it created a soft mentality on the team. And I feel like that was the biggest issue with the Dan Quinn being let go and why Julio felt a certain type of way. Because Julio, in Dan Quinn's eyes, Julio could do no wrong. Even when he would you know, do, run two plays, 
and then take himself out of the game. He could do no wrong in Dan Quinn's eye. Guys like Rico Allen, who we love. He was a player that Dan Quinn loved because he's the one who switched Rico Allen from a practice player, a practice squad player, cornerback to a safety. In Dan Quinn's eyes, he those players could do no wrong. Even when we could see drop off in Rico Allen's game, we've seen once that injury, he wasn't the same player. The same thing with a guy like Keanu Neal. Look at all of the players that went over to Dallas. That's just going to show proof of what I'm saying. Uh, Casey's coming off an injury. We don't know what Monte Casey's going to be next season. He's over there with Dan Quinn. Um, seen drop off in Keanu Neal's game. Where is he? Over there in Dallas with Dan Quinn. Because in Dan Quinn's eyes, those guys could do no wrong. And I really feel like that's the biggest issue with Dan Quinn and being a player's coach. You can't, like, this is a business. How many times we say this is a business? We can't just deal out contracts because of what a player has done in the past. Yeah, this team got us to the Super Bowl. They didn't win it. At the end of the day, as much as we want to say we should have a championship, should have, would have, could have. If that was uh, Bill Belichick, when they didn't get the job done, somebody was getting cut. I'm just being real with you. Devontae Freeman missed that block in that game. Oh, you ain't getting that big contract because you didn't get the job done when the pressure was on. Oh, of those players oh. that. Whoa, yeah, I'm just whoa. being real with you. If you don't get the job done, Damn. hey, Bill Belichick do not care. He don't get in his feelings. He's not falling in love. He's not inviting you over for Christmas and Thanksgiving. He can care less about all of that. He cares about winning championships. And that's what I see the biggest problem with the last regime. And that's what I love about Arthur Smith. He's coming in here and saying, we want people that's going to compete. I don't care about your title. I don't care how much money you make. Everybody's going to practice. Everybody's going to do it my way or what? There's the door. And for Julio Jones, he told, and Terry Fano did the same thing. He pointed to the door. There's the door. If you don't like how we, this ship is running and you don't, you don't want to flow in the direction of the team, there's the door. I don't care how good of a player you are. At the end of the day, I can replace that production. But we need players that's going to do it my way. Because when you don't do it, if you don't have that structure of do it my way or the highway, then players get out of line. Then players get out of line. We've seen it in Pittsburgh. That's exactly what happened with Antonio Brown. He started getting out of line. Yeah, I'm, I'm being real. When you start letting star players do what they want to do, some other players are looking up to that star player. Trust me, mm. I'm really looking up to Julio Jones. So if you see Julio saying, I'm not practicing today, eventually, once he gets that big contract, he's going to say that, have that same mentality. And I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> before, we get to Rock, but before we get to Jay Rock, I, I need everybody in the chat right now. Everybody, yeah, just we, skipped need over fire, me. we need fire emojis, okay? Fire emojis. Everybody yeah. at fire because you just. Blew this bitch fire. all. Everybody fire emojis right there. That right there, just absolute truth. All right, Miss Maggie, what you got? No, you you went to uh, what's that? Go ahead, I'll go last. You you That's sure? Crazy. Oh yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Um, since you know, since Mike already started the whole chat thing, I was getting ready to get this started too. Uh, it's been a while. I did tell myself. That I wasn't gonna whip it out until the season started, but I'm gonna need everybody to put the jacket emoji in because <laughs> I'm about to talk. All right, all right. <laughs> oh, did he? Oh. And then he took the jacket off and got oh, off. Man. <laughs> oh. Well, <laughs> well why he putting oh. his jacket on? We'll, we'll hey, let hey, him get in. Hey, hey, hey. He, he right here. He, Come he'll on, be man. Back. He'll be back. Hello. Hey, look. Look, I he know prior excited. to getting in here, I know StreamYard <laughs> has not been liking me and it's been on my bad side, but they trying to <laughs> shut me down. But I won't let them shut me down, all right? That's right. <laughs> all right. I'm going to start with the Julio Jones trade. Mm. You hate to see it, especially hearing it coming out of his mouth. But we knew it had to, been, it had to be done. I'd rather it be done now than later. Because if it, if, if it wouldn't have been done quicker, then it would hurt us along the line. Um, at the end of the day, Julio wanted out. Uh, I respect 
you know, him at least, you know, speaking it up because we already know how quiet he is. He doesn't talk a whole lot. So we don't really know what he really wants. But he, he spoke it that day when he was talking to Sharp on TV, whether he was whether he knew that he was live on TV or not. He spoke it. That's what, was, that's what was on his mind. Um, <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, I mean, there, there's still no love lost. I'm, I'm still a fan of Julio. Rather you go, I, w- I want him to be successful. I mean, even though he's not playing with us, you hate to see it because we we speak about this all the time. We wanted the same with Roddy. We wanted the same with Julio. We wanted him to play the rest of the season with Atlanta and retire. We don't want him to play for nobody else but Atlanta. Thanks. So at the end of the day, he he's still he's still gonna. Whatever he does in Tennessee, whether he fails or succeeds, at the end of the day, he's going to be Atlanta Falcon Hall of Famer, regardless. He's not going to no, no under no Tennessee, none of that, regardless. So, like I said, there's no love loss, you know, even though I bought that damn Julio Jones, that hoodie I bought. Y'all know what's one. I bought it like two months ago, man. And then, you know, it, it, it happens. It's It's life. Um, that's all I got to really say about that. I'm happy that he got to go somewhere, you know, maybe he wanted to go there or whatever, but let, let me talk about it for the team. Like as far as, yeah, we, I agree with K styles. We won the trade. If, if we're getting a second round, um, just to, uh, just to clear the cap, that's not a bad deal. So Mm -hmm. that's, that's good. Um, other than that, I think we should be good. That's something that's already been taken care of now that we can go ahead and sign the rookies and focus on. I know everybody's talking about, oh, what are we going to do with Foy Lucon? Shoot, we never, mm. now we got you know, room to now work on stuff like that. A we got right. the money for it. We can actually you know look forward now. So I'm glad that's behind us now. Um, I'm going to start with this. This is something completely to- to- some totally different. I've been seeing this all weekend prior to matter of fact, matter of fact, at the same time of hearing Julio Jones is gonna go somewhere else. I know a lot of people have been saying, oh, you know, Matt Ryan's not this and not that without Matt uh without Julio Jones. Atlanta's not gonna be the same. I'm gonna drop some gems real quick for anybody new. Atlanta Falcons fans or whether you some OG Atlanta Falcons fans. Matt Ryan's been doing this for a long time. And I've always said before there was a Julio Jones, there was a Roddy White. And his numbers never really changed. I want to say Matt Ryan's 4,000 yards each season probably started in 2011. Ever since then, he's never looked back. So he's been doing this for a while. And these two guys that I've named, Julio Jones and Roddy White, are our top, you know, receiving leaders. So vice versa, you could say, you know, oh, you know, Roddy White or Julio couldn't have done it without Matt Ryan or, you know, Matt Ryan couldn't have done it without Julio Jones or Roddy White. So at the end of the day, like, like, you got to, you got to, Think about this, yo, you guys, like for all the the new fans that are just hopping on the bandwagon, because I know there's some Julio Jones fans and they're like, oh, man, like they're not going to be nothing without Julio. Matt Ryan's been doing this for a long time. He's he's going on year 14. Yeah, we had Roddy for 10 years and we had Julio for 10 years. So you got to think about the whole team aspect. Like we're going to be just fine going into the season. We're going to be just fine. If not, hell, we're going to be a lot better because then we won't really have to look at, oh, wait, where's number 11? No, there's going to be none of that no more. So I got to, y'all new fans got to chill now. Like some of us that have been around for a long time, we watched Matt Ryan progress every single season. Now that we have an offensive-minded head coach, it's it's going to jail. Y'all just going to have to give us some time. I know a lot of people saying, you know, um, Oh, rebuild this and all that. No, I, we're at the point we're about to win now. We may not do like super excellent the first season, but it's progress. It, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time. 
But that's all I got to say about that. I know a lot of people in the chat saying F Julio Jones. Like, look, at the end of the day, he's an Atlanta Falcon Hall of Famer. Let's, let's not get too crazy. Can't do nothing about that. Everybody's upset. But what, what does the Hall of Famer say? Go ahead, take it. Take it. I'm sorry. <laughs> go ahead, uh, twist it, and I'm going to go ahead and jump in. You had something? What does the Hall of Famer Tony G say? The one who's played with him. Good question. You know he what says, Matt, I'll say about Matt Ryan? Yeah, yeah. Because it amazes me how many fans say that Matt Ryan's this, Matt Ryan's that, but you have a Hall of Famer that's been in the locker room with him, that's been able to win games with him, that's been able to have a, a chance to even go to the playoffs with him, say good things about him and say that he's a elite QB. So it's just exactly. amazing what people say. So I, I forgot what game it was earlier this season, but it was a post game, you know, before the game. So I don't know who he was playing, but Tony Gonzalez said out of his mouth, he was like, I only had like two, three years in me. But to Matt Ryan, I played a couple more it seasons is. because of him. What what does that tell right. you? That tells you a lot about him. Mm-hmm. And I want to give a shout out to, because we didn't get a chance. Everybody was saying this feels. Um, let's go back to the Super Chats. We didn't miss you. We put it up there, but of course, we want to acknowledge you. Uh, Myron Jackson, thanks for the $5 Super Chat with the fire you. signs. Ah. Appreciate it, homie. As well as Georgia, Texas boy. Teams are going to start playing us soft without Julio and we'll bite the bullet. Really gauge Pitts, Hurt, Sharp, Davis, Patterson, Hawkins, pick your bullet. Okay. All right. And appreciate the $5 as well on that super chat. But everybody kind of, I'm in unison with, with everybody. Um, it was a way it was handled that I disliked. Um we all know what time Shannon Sharp comes on that television. Anytime you pick up around a certain time, you got to know. I don't care if he thought that he was on commercial break, but Julio Jones knew. I think what it came down to was, like you said, it was the favoritism when we got our new regime. Julio Jones knew then, oh, man, I ain't going to have my way no more. And then as soon as we drafted Kyle Pitts, Somebody that can be versatile into a certain role, possibly, he might have feared his replacement was right there. Not saying that's going to be the case, people, but I think Julio Jones felt that, you know, because I even said it from the beginning, nobody's safe with this regime. Everybody got to prove themselves. You got Arthur Smith out there telling these veterans, no, do it again. Start it over. Run that play back. You're not going to get your way this time. So you can't come in here and lollygag and play around and, okay, I'm just going to practice a little bit here, practice a little bit there. I'm just Julio Jones. You got Ridley now trying to get that, those yards. You know what I'm saying? You got other players that want to be in that competition. So you can't come in yeah. here and have acid if we're trying to win now. You know, everybody got to be on point in this, at this because we have talent, just like Twisted Torch TV said. We got talent. We, we, we're not the team that we was, the record we was last season. I'm sorry. We had a lot mm -hmm. more, but it's definitely had came down to coaching and favoritism and everybody doing what they want. So now you get to see some players. You probably not even heard names yet at this point. You're getting ready to see a lot of key players. It's like, who, where did this person come from? On defense, on offense, because everybody, especially with Dean Pease, OMG. <laughs> I'm loving what he's got to say. So, I ain't going to drag this too much longer because we don't have enough of this Julio Jones talk, but let, let deuces, me, it is let, what it let is. Me say, let me say this, um, and I don't know if Kevin got anything else to expand on, but let me say this. Um, one thing that that I want people to leave from this entire situation is that it's okay to say fuck somebody who don't want to be here. Like, if he doesn't want to be here, like, why, why should we, like, why, why Kids should we ass. hang on to the fact that he, what he did? Yeah, he did this for us, but like, if you turned your back, like this man, this man, okay, I'm, I'm a huge, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Julio fan, okay, make no mistake, of the, make no mistake about it. 
if you follow me on Twitter, you know my feelings come out on Twitter, okay? If you follow me here, if you follow everybody here, you know our feelings come out. What really irritates me most about this, and I am going to say this to the death of me, your fans love you. And you cannot say one word to the people who bought tickets, who came to see you, their daughters, their sons, their uncles, their aunts, everybody came to see Julio, gave Julio love, they worship the ground that you walk on. And you can't say one damn word. You can't type out, thank you, Falcons fans. That's it. I don't need a whole damn speech. You can't tell me that you appreciate us. But we see your ass smiling when you get off a damn jet. You know how disrespectful that yeah. is to the fan, yeah. Yeah. first and foremost. I mean, the next day at that people, was just like, yeah, come on, go ahead and get my plane video. ticket. Let's go. They worship who though, like Michael Vick fans worship Michael Vick. This man could, at least Michael Vick gave his fans some love before he left. This man ain't give nobody no love. Matt Ryan is still, Matt Ryan is still like Julio's, Julio, Julio's, you know, he's one of the players that, that, you know, the most impact. He took a shot at Roddy saying that, and this man still ain't said nothing. He ain't said nothing uh, about Matt Ryan. He ain't said nothing about Arthur Blank. He ain't thought, thank Arthur Blank. He ain't thank the, the fans. This man just smiling. All the first thing we see his ass, I'm out of here and smiling his ass off on damn on on the damn jet, getting off the jet, smiling. And you trying to tell me as a fan that I don't have a like I have I don't have a reason to be in my feelings. He took a dump on everybody, everybody. And you trying to tell me that we gotta we gotta kiss his behind? Man, come on, stop. Get out of here with that nonsense. Like I yeah, said, that, I, that's foul. Like I said, I don't beg grown ass men to stay. I was getting ready to say something similar. Yeah. Because you're gonna get you're gonna get a half half ass player when they don't want to be here. That's like any job. If you don't want to be there, you can't stand to be there, you ain't gonna perform to your best. Right. You, you know your paycheck's still gonna be there, but you ain't gonna put up you put your all into it. So I don't want to have done Julio Jones. I ain't even gonna lie. I ain't even gonna lie to you. The thing that has me kind of like knowing who was with, was with some sh some bullshit or bs i'm sorry bs terry fontano arthur smith haven't made a statement either it took arthur blank making a statement to, for us to actually know something that's foul yeah. that that then the, then the, um a statement comes out basically saying that julio was avoiding contact with arthur smith and terry fontano so he wasn't even trying to talk to the new regime and give them a chance to even see if we can work this out. Like it's so it's so much deeper than this, and the way he's been hiding, like especially on social media, because he hasn't done nothing really is to let us know anything. And then you come out the next day, you trade it on the jet. That's when we see you. That's foul, man. That's tough, bro. Yeah, I got a question for everybody. We got to bite the bullet for that. And I got something to add to that too. What? Twister had to say. Go ahead, oh, yeah, I can go ahead. We can go ahead and read oh. this one. I was going, you know, ask the question after this. Well, I was saying what it was asking. I'm asking that question too. But um, what Twister was saying that um, Arthur Smith and Terry yeah. had nothing to say. I feel like they're still trying to process everything at this point. So they have to gather their thoughts and get everything together because, of course, all eyes will be on them, and they want to know what they have to say and for them to be a regime that is very hush hush about some things they're gonna have to calculate their speeches and stuff so like that we're gonna get a conference trust and believe they just don't want to do it last minute and be like yeah you know give them what we normally get they really have to sit down and thought think about this i think we're gonna get a, a something from them you know sooner or later but go ahead appreciate that maggie mm -hmm. They said, uh mark daniel uh 999 super chat going through a culture change with Smith first year would be tough, but the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. That's right. 
That's right. We're not saying we are Super Bowl contenders at this point, but we have to start making those moves and get up out of this bad, these bad cap situations and bad contracts. We still got people on the on the damn debt. You know, on, we're still paying people that ain't even here right about now. That's <laughs> wild. Like, it's just ridiculous. That's wild. You're right. <laughs> we got to get out of this situation so we can move on from it. Because remember, at the before all this process started, remember the main thing they said was we have to have a plan for the now, five years from mm -hmm. now, and the future. <laughs> hey, the, the other one funny, bro. The awesome <laughs> yeah, he funny. Well, I like this one, Mark Daniel. Though this this is a dope one. I like this though, uh -oh, but you got a oh, funny. Yeah, that was a funny one. Chad Bagley, four ninety nine. Titans fan here. Future is bright for Falcons. Getting draft capital. Calvin Ridley and Office Smith is amazing. You know what? Thank you, sir. Thank you for giving us. Well, everybody, <laughs> hey, uh, Jew, uh, um, uh, Kevin wanted to kind of give him an idea of what you're getting in who uh, getting it for, uh, from Julio, like even the personalities, like like what what are, what are the Tennessee Titans getting from Julio? Well. From what the G, from what I heard, what the GM said was the main emphasis that they put on Julio is his blocking. So you're gonna... <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey! I'm just saying. Hey, I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, I'm just saying that that that's what came out the report when he said that he the one thing he loved about Julio is his blocking. Uh, like said, but the thing is, you're going to get a definite talent, but the problem is we don't know if he's going to catch big plays and sit on the sideline for a couple plays, or is he actually going to be 100% healthy to play 80% of the snaps? But y'all get a playmaker. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, is now as Tennessee type fans, you have to look at it now with getting Julio. Are you are the is the coaching staff still going to stick with what got them there, or, or are they going to readjust their offense and make it more pass happy? Which, with with because like I said, when you get a superstar talent like Julio Jones, sometimes teams tend to go away All from what. With that. They start mm -hmm. with that new toy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so it could be like I said, you could get uh you got two wide receivers to where you have to double team both and a running back that you probably had to put nine in the box. Yeah. The only the only thing I would be worried about as Tennessee Titans fan is is this going to change the identity of the team? Mm. And you have to remember. Now that you're taking all of Julio Jones's guaranteed money, remember that's what I want to do. So. Remember, AJ Brown's coming up for a contract in a year or two. There, here we're gonna be looking for an extension in a couple years. And is that money that Julio gonna make gonna destroy that opportunity? Because now y'all base now we basically the switch cap situation from us being Woo. in the cap situation to now y'all got the cap situation. I was just gonna say they yep. should they got a hell of a cap now. <laughs> they got a hell of a cap. <laughs> so, there you go. Thank you. Yeah. There you go. But the thing is, it's a it's, it's a win now move. But the problem is, is it doesn't make you ten times better. Like people are already. Um, People are already proclaiming Tennessee to be Super Bowl favorites this year. I, I like I said, that's the problem. You don't go too far with a move like that. And I want to get on this Quaden comment. Talking about we were talking about that when Julio Jones was here because we thought that Julio Jones wanted to be here, but when we find out that Julio no. Jones doesn't, it's next man up. Oh, bye bye. Hold on. Hold on, this is the dude from the last show. Hey, this is the dude from the last show that was mad at us because we wasn't mad about Julio not wanting to be here. Thank you for coming back. We appreciate you coming back, homie. Yeah, I, I didn't catch him. But uh, yes, I tune changed. 
Because no, Julio Jones just disappointed the whole entire lot of Falcons. He go. He go. Hold on, hold on, Miss Maggie. I'm gonna say this. My my tune hasn't changed. My I'm still singing the same <laughs> tune. <laughs> yeah, this this is my thing with Julio going to Tennessee. You just made a lateral move. You didn't. You say you want to win now. It was the same thing that JJ Watt did. I want to lead the Texans. I want to win now. You go to the Arizona Cardinals, and everybody right. called. They everybody basically stated he capping. He wants that money. It's the same thing with Julio Jones. Hey, this man. man wants a new contract. And what K Styles was just saying, I want to piggyback on. He's going to the Tennessee Titans, and I'm gonna tell you right now, they not changing their identity. Derrick Henry is the number one guy over there. That's Derrick Henry's team. It's not Ryan Tannehill's team. That's Derrick uh, Henry's team. He just ran for rushed for two thousand yards. Oh, so Julio is going over there to be a wingman, just like people criticize my man LeBron. He went over to South Beach, and that was Dwayne Wade's team. That he's going to Derrick Henry's team. So at mm-hmm. the end of the day, they're not changing what they do. They're not changing their identity because their head coach is Mike Vrabel. Mike Vrabel believes in running the football. He comes. He believes in hard nosed football. He played with the New England Patriots as a linebacker. So he, they're going to be the run first team, which means Julio Jones' numbers are going to go down. So he's not going to get that contract that he's chasing. He wants another big contract, but he's not going to get it in Tennessee because they have to pay A.J. Brown. They have to continue to pay Derrick Henry, which means he's going to be blocking. This case that I was just mentioned, he's going to be doing a lot of blocking. He's not going to be catching a lot of passes. Ryan Tannehill right. is not the quarterback that Matt Ryan is. Go look at Ryan Tannehill's number. Matt Ryan religiously throws for over 4,000 yards. That's not Ryan Tannehill. Definitely. So basically going to a worse They situation. just gave him a lot of money, too, Ryan Tannehill, over Derrick Henry, just to put that exactly. out there. Exactly. He's going to a worse situation. So basically, we it don't even you, have to spec. We don't even have to speculate. I'm telling it, you. It makes you think, did Julio Jones really want to go there, or was this a Arthur Smith in their move? Like, we're going to mm, go to where we feel like no, you need to go no. so we can get the oh, best oh, situation oh, out of oh, it. Oh. Uh, I want, I want, I want to say something on this. Um, I think it was the AJ Brown um, DM message that made him want to go over there. <laughs> Remember, I did say he sounded like a side chick. <laughs> but, but Julio, he just want to be loved. Julio don't give a damn about no football right now. He just want to be loved. But, he want to be touched. But, but, but that, for real, but, but for real though, like I said, y'all going to get a good wide receiver. Now they see now Tannehill has to balance. Okay, I gotta get him this ball. I gotta give AJ Brown AJ, the ball. Mm-hmm. But I got this, I got this UPS truck behind me. That's gonna get and the ball. They're that's they're tough. tough. That that yeah, that, that that's gonna get the ball about 30 times. So and then this is another thing that I see about how a lot of players like playing with each other. I know basketball is a little different because players tend to share, and then you you ain't got that many people to deal with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Football is a, football is a different animal when it comes to people wanting to play with each other because ego really get... can handle all of that. Do you have yes. a quarterback that can handle all those like strong person? Julio is not yeah. one of those guys you can push over and say, yeah. "Guess what?" Uh, like. Uh, Julio not gonna get the ball. Julio, he might not say it, but you're gonna see it in his attitude. You're gonna see it in the way he's gonna mm, Yeah. Like you remember that game against Carolina? He was like, Man, look, I'm just have to like he got like yeah. he didn't have a, a, a catch in like the first three quarters, and then if like towards the end, end of the game, he's like, Hey man, I'm just man, I just gotta run with the <laughs> offense. Like Julio was pissed off. So it's like now he got AJ, like AJ, he all cool with it now because he got his idol. Like he, he he got his idol. He got a guy that he patting his game at the foot. When he not getting those receptions, and you know Derrick Henry is feeling it, and he got like two hundred yards in the first half. It's like you think those receivers gonna want to block all day? Hell no! There ain't no way in bloody hell they gonna want to block. Those receivers gonna want their money, and they gonna want those targets. So all of this nonsense about you know yeah you got this, but I'm not sure. I'm not certain that Tannehill has the like the the mental fortitude to be able to handle those three dominant personalities. Because, like I said, if you can't, if Julio Jones, okay, if this dude ain't happy with being one of the greatest receivers of all time and playing with one of the greatest 
quarterbacks of all time, and he's always the center of every thing that we do when we hire all defensive coordinators, when we hire offensive coaches. If he he's always the center. If Julio still ain't happy with that, what makes you think? What makes you think that you're going to be able to handle him in Tennessee? All right. Hold on, hold on. Oh, what uh, you got? What, what you got? Just, my, my, my only question is, how is he going to get a lot of targets if he's going to be blocking and going out on plays? Like, what, what are you going to get, like, five targets a game? <laughs> I, just, I just can't see that. that. That don't make sense to me. I don't know about that, man. That's how I know we want to trade because I don't see how they're going to actually utilize Julio Jones like we did. Uh, and Titan gonna Anderson, I'm going to put my um, email in the chat. Email me if you want one of the guys on the show. Um, um, someone requesting me out to be on the show. But let's get to this super chat before we get into some more. Um, Christian Bramwell. Bucks fan from Tampa and lived in the A. Love the Hawks and Magic. Who's the worst of these guys? Tannehill, Ryan, or Stafford? I'm gonna put my email in while y'all answering. And lived in and love the Hawks and Magic. Who's the worst of the guys? I guess I'm confused why he Stafford in the conversation. Look, I'm gonna answer for that five dollars. Hey, Tannehill, the worst out of them guys, dog. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know, dog. All you need to know is Ryan Tannehill is the worst. Period. I would go, I would go, look, I would go Pat Ryan, Stafford, and then Tannehill. Tannehill. Easy. Yeah. yeah. Easy. Easy. Yeah. Just look at the stats. Follow the stats. As, as Mike always say, follow the money. Go look at their stats. Go look at their stat line. A lot of people sleep on Matthew Stafford. And a whole yeah. bunch of people sleep on Matt Ryan, who's a first ballot Hall of Famer at this point. Ryan Tannehill, he got a lot of work to do. He's not... He's not guaranteed to even sniff the Hall of Fame. But everybody's saying he's better than Matt Ryan. So this goes look at the stats, but we appreciate the five dollar super chat. But easy, Matt Ryan, Stafford, Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill got huge shoes to fill, though. Now that he has Julio Jones, what a lot of people don't realize is how much pressure, and that's what Mike was just talking about. He's going to be be under immense pressure because mm -hmm. when they put all of that talent around you, now you have to prove that you're worth the money. They gave Ron Tannehill a new contract. Arthur Smith is gone. There's no more safety net for a guy like Ron Tannehill. You got all of the weapons in the world, arguably the best running back in the game, arguably the best wide receiver in the game, and arguably one of the best number twos in the game, A.J. Brown. So he has no excuse not to get the job done at this point. So all the pressure right now is on Ron Tannehill's shoulders. So all I got to tell him is good luck. <laughs> good. good luck. People think they can beat Matt Ryan until they get that pressure, boy. Mm -hmm. We're going we we to see what, what he do yes. this year. Okay, right. Let me see. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the issue that I'm looking at here, too, as well, is who's going to be the tight ends on this team for Tennessee because from what I'm looking at, the targets between the two wide receivers they had last year, they had another 198 targets. But if you put in the tight ends that he was throwing to in the slot receivers and Derrick Henry, that's about 300. That's about 250 to 300 targets. John New Smith is up in New England now. So Tannehill loved throwing down the middle of the field. That's what this Arthur Smith offense is, is to control the middle of the field. Mm -hmm. But what is that? Well, what, what is Master Blaster? I like that name, Master Blaster. That sounds like that sounds like a '90s cartoon. <laughs> I love a little, but if you don't want to be here, then see y'all. Uh, we gonna be all right. Go Falcons! Yeah, right. That's the thing. It's like what 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 else can we do at yeah, this point? Hard. If you don't want to be here, he's gone. That's it. That's that's the end of that era. Ten years of your best years, but next man up at this point. Man. Let's mm -hmm. see who's got it. Yeah, boy. You, you had a question, J. Rock. I'm just looking at these crazy comments. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna entertain it. I'm, I'm not. Um, gonna, who, I'm when did he take the physical? The I head. don't know. I don't. I'm not gonna follow that anymore. I don't know when yeah, he take yeah. his physical. Yeah, he who, showed who, big who, grin who, and he got to take his physical. Hey, like I said, Julio, Julio <laughs> now. 
Look, Julio, Julio as of right now, is that way. That way. He's over there. He he's over there with the Smithers regime. That that's a Smithers regime guy now. So we have to focus on the guys that we got here. And what I would say is it's only going to make this team better because now everybody has a chip on the shoulder because they feel like Julio Jones had betrayed them, had turned on them. And I was about to ask y'all a question. Um, when when I said the GM said something about Julio's blocking. Did that sound familiar to you? <laughs> I'm gonna ask you. Did, did, did that sound? That sound like Kyle Shanahan to me. Shanahan to, to Roddy White. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 I like that. That's Bob crazy. Is time for the Ridley Pitts era. Boom. Well, we'll see. <laughs> but that'd be great, though. They come out no, and no. they jail great. No, it's not the Pitts and Ridley era no more. It is the run the damn ball <laughs> era. <laughs> do you see? Do, do you see this in the back? Do you see Michael Turner right here? We going back to that. <laughs> 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 That's what this team needs. <laughs> we got a super chat. Let me put that up. Super chat up in here. Where it go? Uh, Christian. Okay, Brandon Will again, two ninety nine. Rank off these uh, offenses for twenty twenty one Falcons, Titans, Saints, Rams. What, what are you trying to get us to? He's uh, giving us all these scenarios to compare and contrast. Uh, <laughs> oh, the Rams did <laughs> last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. It's gonna be Falcons, Titans, Falcons, Titans, Saints, Rams. Easily in the exact order he put it. The Saints gonna have a. They're gonna be you know building the first at least five or six games with Jameis Winston. I think or, they need to reverse the Rams and the Saints possibly because Drew Brees is there. So without Drew Brees. I don't see the I think the I think he had a right Falcons. Um I think he reversed the Ram and the Saints. I think the Saints are gonna have a worse offense. <laughs> they still got AK though. Yeah, but I just need a shot. I'm I'm a, I'm a I'm a Sean McVay. I'm a Sean McVay believer. I think Sean McVay is a better play caller at yeah. this point than Sean Payton. And we yeah. all know the slant Thomas last year. He looked like he was a little bit on the decline last year with an injury. Okay, so quiet, quiet. We can't, we can't talk about him. I can't talk about him. He ain't had no catches in the playoff game. That's disrespectful. That was like he was right. quiet. <laughs> and let's not forget Matthew Stafford now is the quarterback for the Rams, so he can push the ball down the field more mm -hmm. than a guy like they had in. I forget his name. Now he in Detroit, the former quarterback. That who, who Jared just Goff. Oh, you Jared Goff. Goff. There you go, Jared Goff. Oh, they got oh. two good receivers though, Cup and um Woods. Oh. Right. They oh, shift the good. receivers. Good. Oh, that oh, oh I'm about to say that. that yeah, was about to say, I'm just saying good. Yeah, they regular. Regular oh. smugglers. Oh, so his name was Jared Goff. I just called him garbage, but okay, Jared Goff, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he with the lines now. Tragic. Damn, he got he got throw to my homie. God, oh man. Damn, hey, listen. Man. I got a, I got a for really real, like a for really real, real question for everybody. When, whenever Julio Jones comes back in this building, whether you know he, he's he's at a he's at the stand, you know, getting ready to go to the Hall of Fame or whatever, or he's either in uniform. That let me. I already know where you're going before. Let, let, let me stop you right here. All right, before like that, let me just stop you. If he, if he, if he, if he's coming here, I want to hear the whole question. I, I already know. Go finish it. He go, I don't know where he's going with it. Go, go, girl. Somebody already said something in the chat already. They already know what they already knew. They already knew I was going with it. <laughs> he said he's gonna get booed. <laughs> go ahead. Right. If he returns in this building, whether he's you know going to the Hall of Fame 
or he's in another uniform. Do we boo him or do we cheer him? What do, what do y'all what do y'all think? Let's be honest. This is a for really real question. It depends on what happens in the next couple of weeks. I need him to make an statement. I need him to at least address the fans because I love Julio Jones. I, I'm, you know, I don't give a damn. I know you don't give a damn, but I still respect the the player and what he's done for this franchise. None he done did. So, all that so, shit goes out of the window because all that was fake love from the very beginning. It's his true heart and his true personality shine through. It's like, like for me, and I apologize, Maggie, but it's like once you show me who you yeah, we'll really you finish, are. Oh, I was gonna make a comment. I was gonna say, um, what if, I about to say, if he comes, what, what if, what if he doesn't retire and go to the Hall of Fame as a Falcon, <laughs> just because it is. <laughs> who? I, wait, no, wait. The, no, the, no, that no. comment is going to be an way. answer to your question. <laughs> somebody, wait, wait. somebody. Wait, 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 wait. Somebody put, it up. put on that comment. What uh, comment? I, I can't put it up right now. It's, it's, Which one? it's zero chill. He said, oh, no, nah, I'm out of there to answer the, your question. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. oh. So I wouldn't say he's going to be necessarily booed, but if you're talking about a situation to where if he's going to look to retire or go to a Hall of Fame and he doesn't go in as a Falcon, then oh, that's going to no, be a I'm whole story. Oh, that's going to be a story <laughs> right there for your ass. <laughs> we come here uh, preseason matchup week one. He ain't gonna play. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, he ain't gonna play. I, don't, don't matter. I wonder if he come though. I wonder if he show up. He he, he won't be in the building for that. He ain't gonna be it in the really building. He... On, I think it depends on what we're doing as a Falcon because if we're winning, then people will be more inclined to forgive what he's done. Um, like if we're I winning, we like we, we don't. You know what I'm saying? We're like we're not missing him. We got uh, KP, and he he's balling. It's like we have no reason to say anything negative about who will if Ridley is doing this thing and KP doing this. Like that, that's, I mean, it's pretty much similar to what you know how Roddy White that like they felt the need to get rid of Roddy White at that time because we already had a Julio Jones to kind of lessen that blow. So like the organization was like, okay, this is the perfect time to get rid of Roddy, um, and that's the same thing. For Julio Jones, like if we're winning, if we're miserable, and Matt Ryan just goes into this deep decline because of Julio and and him going to Tennessee, then people gonna boo the living hell out of him. You know what I'm saying? I think people gonna boo the living hell out of him. But if we're winning, people are not they they're not gonna care. They're not gonna care. I mean, I think it's gonna be mixed. I think it's. Just- gonna be mixed reactions some people gonna show love some people gonna do the whole Vic split jersey thing you know how a fan base get you know <laughs> so it's gonna be one of those situations you're gonna be seeing a whole bunch of 11s half and half because oh i'm a julio jones yeah. fan um let's get to this uh five dollar super chat too noel tendill preseason week one matchup remember he ain't gonna show up yeah, he's gonna be, there. He ain't gonna he ain't gonna gonna be in no preseason <laughs> like i said he be in Las vegas that man gonna be a low figure. That man ain't coming here. That dude who yeah. know John gonna he gonna be a buckhead somewhere. <laughs> hey, <that was> <laughs> <laughs> he ain't gonna be in that stadium, bro. Mm-hmm. He got another team that's gonna kiss his behind. Right. Ain't nothing but a little bit of straightening. Mm-hmm. Let's just move on to our new talent, man. This is this is my last time talking about who <laughs> yeah. you know, is <laughs> Yeah, I'm this is the I'm this episode of while. this mess. No more of Julio Jones. You know, now if he do some kind of speech, I'll make a little small little video about it. But other than that, yeah. we done. Let's move on. New regime, <laughs> new players. We can sign our rookie class now. So let's go. Exactly. Hey, and my hey, question is, oh, look, my bad. My question right. is to some of the um. Falcon fans that are mad over the Julio thing, I wonder what the percentage of them going to turn to Tennessee. Because, remember, 
ATL cleanse. That's what they're doing. They're cleansing all of the bullshit fan, fans and energy. There's going to be a whole bunch of people jumping ship to Tennessee. I already see it coming. Mm -hmm. I, got, I, got, I got a question for y'all, too, though. Can y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. I'll go. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike, I, Mike already discussed this. Me and him discussed this sadly, but I want to ask the rest of the panel. With Dean Pease being in the fold, do y'all see Deion Jones being a top three linebacker this year? He already top three. I think I talked <laughs> a little bit about him. Yeah. He already top three, y'all. He already top three. Man. He already top three, man. Hey, hey, look at look. The NFL is all about what have you done for me lately? In 2016, what's mm. the toys talked about it? And you talked about it on your show, Twisted. In 2016, everybody was singing Deion Jones' praise. That's when Brian Erlacher came out and basically said he a bad mother, shut your mouth. That he that dude that Deion Jones is serious. Shut your mouth. And then after that, <laughs> uh Devin White came out and everybody forgot about Deion Jones because we had three losing seasons. Everybody's Talk like, what happened to Deion Jones? Deion Jones is still shutting down Christian McCaffrey. He's still shutting down Alvin Kamara. Last year he led the team in sacks as a linebacker. Ain't nothing changed with a Deion Jones. Deion Jones is Deion Jones. It's just like Bobby Wagner. Even though the Seahawks mm. defense suck now because there's no Legion of Boom. Bobby Wagner is Bobby Wagner. Same thing about Deion Jones. He a baller. So he's already top three because the league is based off of being able to cover. And Deion Jones is the best, the number one coverage linebacker in the game, hands down. He's the fastest linebacker in the game. Everybody wants to talk him. about Devin White. Everybody wants to talk, talk about those Buccaneer linebackers. Our linebackers are better than the Buccaneers. Our team just sucked last year. Point blank in the period. Once we get back to winning games, and that's what Michael just talking about. Once we get back to winning games, our players will get their praise. So this Julio Jones issue with him leaving, that's going to be good for Matt Ryan because that's going to put the spotlight. All those people that are saying Julio Jones made Matt Ryan, where there's no more Julio Jones. So when Matt Ryan starts balling, don't start crying and talking about, but now he got Cal Pitt. He got Calvin Ridley. He got this one. He got that My, my thing about that, Jew, I'm going to add to that. Everybody was like, oh, Julio Jones, I mean, um, Matt Ryan ain't going to be nothing without Julio Jones. But uh, guess what? We still had a ball game without Julio Jones on the field each and every time. So Three. I think we're going to be all right. Easily. Always gonna move the goalposts. Mm -hmm. They always gonna move the goalposts for Matt Ryan. Mm -hmm. Once he win the Super Bowl, they gonna say, "Well, Matt Ryan can't win two. He can't win three. <laughs> he can't win." It's always gonna be a move the goalposts at the end of the day. Talk to him. Do Do you think? And this is a question for everybody in the chat. Also, do you think there's a there's a narrative like? I, I think I know everyone's opinion and thoughts on it, but like I said, I want I want everybody's thoughts on it, even the people in the in the chat. But do you think there's some narrative like Matt Ryan is on pace to destroy this like every record, the touchdowns, the passing yards, like the completion percentage? Like he's already tied Peyton Manning as far as like the completion percentage is concerned. You know, every like having like. 10 straight years with 63 uh, plus uh, completion percentage. Do you think there's a narrative to pretty much deny Matt Ryan from breaking a lot of NFL records? I want uh, J. Rod, I want you to go ahead and hit that one up. Well, what you got on that? Uh, that's a good question, Mike. That's a really good question. As far as denying, like, 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 break it down for me. Like, it's like, give, give me an example. Just all like we're talking about because when you look at records, like we see right now that Pe like Peyton Manning is the god of all quarterback records. Like this dude holds all the records, and right now we're talking about you know as far as like comebacks. Tom Brady is you know he's he's the top. He's the top guy when it comes to you know the comebacks and whatnot. But Matt Ryan is creeping up. He's creeping up also. Um, you have Brett Favre. You have Drew Brees. All those guys 
uh, on pace. Matt Ryan is on pace to break all of those guys' record. So when you look at the NFL, you see that they are, you know, they 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 really go hard on marketing these guys. So when you have a guy like a Matt Ryan that is close and he's like he's right there, he's gonna break them. If he continues to stay healthy, he's gonna break those records. Do you think? Like, because they can't say that Tom Brady is the greatest if he doesn't have all the records. Matt Ryan is going to have those records. So you think there's like a, a, a you know, a, a quote unquote coup to kind of stop him from getting those records, like making a guy like Julio Jones, like because they they don't want him like they that right now they're trying to say the Falcons need to rebuild and get rid of Julio, get rid of everybody. Why is it why are they going so hard to do that? Like, why are they going? And for me, I think that's one of the reasons because you know they don't want Matt Ryan to break those records, they don't want the Falcons to even have anything. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Like, they don't want any, you know, they don't want any player from Atlanta to have those type of stats. I do think that Matt Ryan's stats are being ignored a lot like everything now that you brought that to my attention that yeah he he passed eli and he and he's on the verge of passing paid manning and all that stuff i do think stuff like that is getting ignored and that's what i hate about the media when it comes to talking about atlanta falcons because like y'all completing y'all yeah y'all really like completely ignoring the whole thing because every time everybody or somebody mentions Matt Ryan, they just mentioned the Super Bowl, but they're not mentioning everything that he did coming into the league. I mentioned this earlier. Ever since 2011, he hasn't looked back. It's been a 4,000-yard season for about, what, 10 seasons straight. Mm. Nobody's mentioned that at all. And look at the freaking passing – passer rating it's it's above yeah. charts right now with and he's doing this with law seasons and without a defense seasons. without a defense hell you can't even throw in without an offensive line his offensive line hasn't been the same <laughs> since we lost mud duck and and the rest <laughs> so you know what i'm like y'all can't y'all can't do that to him so uh, it, he's just gonna prove people wrong, and the more stats he put up, it, it, it's gonna be, it's gonna be. Just think about this: it's gonna be like ten years from now, right? Say this was a scenario, you know, Matt uh, Matt Ryan retires. We all know, blah 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 blah. Everybody gonna be talking about these new gen quarterbacks. You know, it's, it's ten years from now. Everybody's gonna be talking about, um, I don't know, Zach Wilson did this, and Trevor Lawrence did this, and there somebody gonna pull out a book and be like. Oh snap! Yeah, I know that Matt Ryan did this about a couple of years ago. Oh, he also uh-huh. did this in this year too, and in this year, and this year, and this year. It's gonna surprise a lot of people, but I do. If, if that answered your question, Mike, yeah, I do yeah. think everything that Matt Ryan does to this point, and ever since he's done, ever since he came in this league, has been ignored. Hey, Jay, yeah, they, they, they know that there was a. Uh... Go ahead. No, nah, I was gonna say they know they just choose not to look at it. They know who leading his stats. They know the Falcons offense be top ten every year he's there. They choosing to do that. And they only want to bring up negativity. They don't bring up all these receivers they got contracts off of him, all these coaches they got contracts off of him. You can't you can't tell me that even the players that, that do commentate and they say Matt Ryan is, is something. That just it, it'd be baffling me, man. I'd be I'd be it's just about real that. quiet. It's real quiet. It doesn't get praised like as every other quarterback gets praised. Even when the even when those quarterbacks that get talked about a lot of, on the media now, even a, a, a terrible, terrible, terrible game or a terrible, terrible season, they still get talked about. Prime example, yeah. Aaron Rodgers when he had that terrible season, y'all still talking about this man and his numbers and this, this, and that. And then all of a sudden now he's getting traded. Now that y'all, you know. I, I just hate it. I just hate it. I'm going to say this. I'm going to um, add to that, and it's going to pretty much answer the question. CBS, I don't know anybody's seen that article that CBS oh, put out. Man. 
the problem is is the media in Atlanta. Period. Mm. We don't have a positive place that we can go for Falcons content. That's why we try to change the narrative and we try to bring it out here. But the article that CBS came out with was basically we failed because Matt Ryan wasn't a part of that trade. And it was just a whole biased, opinionated article that they're so proud to put out there. Aren't we in Atlanta at this point? This is Atlanta, right? Why can't yeah. I turn go to the AJC? Why can't I go to um, 92, whatever, whatever, and get something positive and reassuring about this? Hey, fans, it's okay. We're going to be all right. We got all these other players. Y'all still trying to bash us. So guess what? Those fans feed into that. Oh, it's Matt Ryan's fault. It's all these other players' fault. It's this, this, it's Terry. It's Arthur. It's Arthur Blank. Right. Because we don't have nothing positive. So people fall, people are cheap, basically. They fall for those um, hashtags. They fall for those, um, cap, you know, where you click on the clickbaits and all that. And they run with it. Oh, yeah, I heard. A lot of times they're not even checking the source from what they're getting this news from. So that's why this rumor mill went all out of whack because everybody got some type of narrative. Oh, Julio Jones didn't want to play with Matt Ryan. Julio Jones didn't want to do this. Julio Jones, you know what I'm saying? Like, did y'all hear it from the horse's mouth that he said this? Child. They are creating a narrative for us, and it's been like that for years, honestly. That's why I don't even cut on the radio stations or do any of that because I'm sorry. It's like it's just too negative for me. I like that, Maggie. I like that, Maggie. They don't have nothing positive to say about this team. They don't never say about, like, all right, well, this is what we look forward to. Give the fans some hope. And that's why I be looking at these comments and I be saying, not the comments for this chat. Y'all are the real fans. I appreciate y'all. But on social media, I just look at their comments. I be like, dang, how y'all going to say we're going to go 5 and 11? How y'all gonna say we're gonna go for it for and like how do y'all already have that in mind and y'all y'all haven't got the training camp yet? That tells me they're listening to somebody and they're not getting a good message to say, well, damn, we got other people. We got Russell Gage that just got 800 yards. We got we got uh, um Zacchaeus that is a deep threat. We just drafted a receiver, but they're not gonna tell you that. Oh, they, they let Julio go. That was the only player they had. He was the only reason we watched the Falcons. No, that's not the only reason you watch a team. It's a team game. He is he is one person. He is a GOAT. I am not lying, but he is one person a part of a team. You watch them as a team. How do you know the defense is suspect? You watch the whole game. You didn't just watch offense. So Jewel. this, this is it. Oh. Jewel always know he knows why I always say this. Um, you and Kevin can kind of pick uh, pick this one up, but y'all know always uh, y'all already know what I say when it comes down to stats. Um, like, are we going to ever see another talent like Julio Jones? Can we replace a Julio Jones? Hell no. We're never going to be able to replace a Julio Jones, but. Y'all already know how you can replace a you can replace you can't replace a player, but you can replace a you can replace the number. So, like, what do you guys think? The what where the Falcons should go as it pertains to the offense, and you know how should they focus on? Should they you know look at the team? It's like should we? you know, kind of go completely away from what Atlanta, the offense used to be, or should we just hold, you know, just make a whole new different style of offense? I'll say this, as far as the offense goes, uh, to answer your question, Mike, I think we need to become more of a run, a run first offense, just like we saw in Tennessee with the three headed, four headed monster that we're going to have in the backfield. And then I say use Calvin Ridley's strength to go over the top and to take the top off the defense on the play action passes on those deep ends. Same routes that Julio Jones ran is the same thing. Uh, there it go. K Styles already put it up. That's what I say. That's what I said. Fans of football. Tell him again, K Styles. Go ahead and say it. 
for the people in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Run the damn ball. There you go. <laughs> That's you it. You know what? Someone took our slogan. Y'all, did y'all see that? Yeah. Yeah, Someone said it. it. Oh, and another Yo, team. Yeah, somebody, some mm -hmm. Tennessee Titans, some Tennessee Titans guy. They took out some. Uh, no, it was the Cowboys. It was the Cowboys. The Cowboys was like, yeah, that came out of nowhere. And I know I got plenty of Cowboys friends, and they ain't never see it run the damn ball. And all of a sudden, we see it on their website <laughs> that they saying run the damn ball. So if everybody knows, so y'all. If y'all go hashtag it, please put AFN in there. AFN run the damn ball. We need a patent. Run the damn ball. <laughs> remember, remember, we're gonna change it to B A W L. <laughs> we changed it that way. I like that one. B A W L ball ball. So y'all know where y'all heard this from. <laughs> <laughs> But so that would that But I wanted, to get, <laughs> I, I, I wanted to kind of get back on the narrative point that you was trying to ask as far as what is the narrative that they're speaking. Let's mm -hmm. be real. Um Matt Ryan is not the guy that they're promoting because he's not the guy that's selling. Mm -hmm. Like when you're talking about guys in the NFL that people are putting on a pedestal, remember you got these are guys that they are advertising. You know, you got Aaron Rodgers with the State Farm commercials and Subway. You got Drew Brees with Nyquil. But sometimes his arm puts our asses to sleep every time we see him throw the ball. But <laughs> Pat Mahomes with State Farm. <laughs> Pat Mahomes, State Farm. Um, Tom Brady, he got T Mobile commercials. You know, he got. He got that um that Robert Kraft money. See, and when you put Matt yeah, Ryan yeah. against uh, that, that, when you put Matt Ryan against those guys in a public eye, he's boring. Mm. He, he he's lame as hell compared to them. That's the narrative that they want to push. So that's yeah. why nobody Matt Ryan really is just a, go to work. Do his job and get the fuck on. That's who Matt Ryan is. <laughs> <laughs> they, they say <laughs> they say he played to him though. Yeah. You say yeah, what? Hey, I'm gonna keep. They they say he's good at telling jokes though. Like you you'll, you'll hear some of the players they'll be like Matt Ryan be saying some funny jokes. See, see, but that's the thing. There, that's that the stuff that they're going to push out. See, like I said, we don't know Matt Ryan's personality. Outside of calling plays in the huddle, see a lot of the other guys. We know what type of personalities they have. So when you have a guy that's not willing to put themselves out there commercially wise, like Matt Ryan, see now all your accomplishments get overlooked, regardless. Mm. Because you have to remember in that 2008 draft, they was already shitting on him before he took the first snap. And I'm talking about mm -hmm. Atlanta fans. Yeah. Because, because remember, Michael Vick sold the tickets. The AJC sold newspapers because they wanted to see Michael Vick on that cover. He gave them a story every time. See, Matt Ryan doesn't get the only story you got on Matt Ryan is 28 to 3. What else mm -hmm. do you have on him? Exactly, K Style. That's where I was going. You just hit the nail on the head, K-Styles. You just brought it home. That's what I was going back to. To answer my question, that's that's the big deal with Matt Ryan. We put too much weight on winning Super Bowls. That's my biggest issue with the NFL. That's my biggest issue with the fan base. And I thought that's where Mike was going when he said, you already know. I thought he was going to talk about, we always say, and Mike always say this, you go check his videos out, man, Mike Sports, hit that subscribe button. He always talks about and then Super Bowl takes a team. It's not one man. But if you look at the guys that have won Super Bowls, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady. What did they say after Tom Brady won a Super Bowl after the Bucs defense prevented the Kansas City Chiefs from scoring a touchdown in the Super Bowl? Who got the MVP? Tom Brady. And all you heard was Tom Brady this, Tom Brady the GOAT, 
Tom Brady that. Tom Brady this. That's the same thing when it goes with quarterbacks. Until Matt Ryan gets a Super Bowl, he's never going to get the, the praise he deserves. So that's why I keep talking about that. 28-3, that Super Bowl continues to haunt the Falcons fan base. Until we get back and make it right and win a Super Bowl, Matt Ryan's always going to be criticized because he doesn't have that illustrious championship. You see mm-hmm. how many uh, in, uh, NFC championships Aaron Rodgers and lost. This man ain't been back to the Super Bowl since he won one. And when was that? That was over a decade ago that Aaron Rodgers won a Super Bowl. But he doesn't get criticized. Yeah, but he doesn't get criticized as not being clutch. He doesn't get criticized. It's always somebody else's fault. When Aaron Rodgers loses in the playoffs, what do they say? He doesn't have enough around him. It's never Aaron Rodgers didn't do it. He, he didn't It's the perform. defense fault. It's, exactly. Yeah. It's always somebody else's fault. So until Matt Ryan gets that Super Bowl, I really don't think that the media is ever going to pay their respects, as we always talk about. Once a team win a championship, you never can take that from them. And that's why I was so pissed off with Kyle Shanahan in 2016 for blowing that Super Bowl. Because if the Falcons would have got that Super Bowl, you can never take that away from us. You can never take that away from a guy like Matt Ryan. And another thing you can't take away, and that's why me and Matt, Mike, when we can hear at FN, we always bring it up, is his stats. All of you hear from the haters when it comes to Matt Ryan is Stat Ryan. Why do they mm-hmm. call him Stat Ryan? Because we can't fall back on he has a Super Bowl championship, so they don't want us to fall back on his stats. But stats are what makes you a Hall of Famer. That's what makes you a Hall of Famer. T.O. don't have a ring. Randy Moss don't have a ring. It's a lot of these guys. Dan Marino doesn't have a ring. Mm. Jim Kelly doesn't have a ring. <laughs> Jim Kelly lost four straight Super Bowls. <laughs> exactly. Do you, hear a lot, do, you, do you hear a lot of shit about it? Like I said, I think if Matt Ryan wins one Super Bowl, I think they're going to still criticize him because he doesn't sell. That's what we're going back to. It's about selling the product. I agree with you. I agree with you. He still going to get criticized, but I think he'll get less criticism because you can't take nothing. When he hold that long party up in front of everybody's face, it ain't much. You, ain't much you can say, but call that man a champion. The and he got career. the stats to back it up. So what they say? And now? he got the stats to back it up. And he got an MVP trophy to back it what up. What they say? And now? He, yeah, you, I mean, he got so much. He got all he missing is that Super Bowl ring. He's won every other. He's won every other trophy. All he got to do is get that Super Bowl ring, get that monkey off his back, and then they can't say nothing. Hey, hey, Jew, quick question. Um, was Matt Ryan top five in passer rating in the Super Bowl? Oh, Matt, Matt Ryan's numbers is top every year, man. He's top five almost every year in passing. They just continue to hate on this man. That's why they're going to continue to call him Stat Ryan. And that's dumb because that's a what puts you in the Hall of Fame. Stats are what makes you great. If we're going to take stats away from guys, then Drew Brees is nothing. Because all they all ever talk about is he has all of these passing yards. That's all we talk about. Peyton Manning, passing yards. Before Peyton Manning had any Super Bowls, all he had was what? Passing yards, touchdowns, passer rating. That's what we go by. That's all we can go by. The stats, the facts, and the truth. That's all we can go by. But people want to talk about their feeling. He's boring to watch. That's your feeling. The man's numbers is the man's numbers at the end of the day. He's producing. He's getting the job done at the end of the day. So you got to respect the man at the end of the day. But if we're being honest, too, in um, 2016, do, do, do people, like, forget how he torched the Packers to get to the Super Bowl? Mm, well, they he, don't care. He embarrassed that team. He like, made them look like twice, rookies. I believe he played them twice that season, so in the playoffs and in the regular season. Yeah, he, can't, he did a comeback for that game. Muhammad yeah, Sanu to end the game. Yeah. Julio yeah. only had three catches for 27 yards. People forget that. It's, 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 it's games that oh, happen oh, like oh, that. Oh, oh, oh. Say, say, say that again. Say it again for the people in the back. In oh, 2016, oh, we played the Packers twice. Um, the first game, Julio Jones had three receptions for 27 yards. We scored 30 something points that game. Taylor Gabriel scored on there. Um, Muhammad Sanu killed them. Matt Ryan ate up and still had a phenomenal game without Julio Jones. Now, I ain't gonna lie to you. The championship game, Julio Jones did kill them. I can't 
But Matt Ryan made a lot of plays that game as well. Like, people got to realize that it's a team effort to get to that Super Bowl. Every QB don't make it to the goddamn Super Bowl, guys. I hate to be, I hate to be the better of bad news, but every QB will not make it to the Super Bowl. A lot of QBs don't make it to the playoffs. People forget that. It's I not mean, that easy. I mean, you look at your what? boy uh, Tony Romo. He was one of those guys that barely made it to the playoffs. <laughs> and they praise him like he's a Hall of Famer. <laughs> they put the Hall of Fame jacket on his ass. <laughs> see, see, but that, but that, that goes to the point that we're saying. Like, we can criticize a quarterback for not having a Super Bowl or a quarterback that's winning a lot of Super Bowls, but if you don't put the credit on the team aspect of it, you're only looking at half the story. Just like we said about Tampa Bay, Tom Brady did not play well in that Super Bowl. That defense. Let me let me let me read it for the people in the back. Man, that's just like the good year blimp, them football, them damn balls he was throwing up in the damn air. Man, that shit was floating for 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> and even right, even the game before that to get there, he threw a three picks versus the Packers in the second half. Right. In the second half right. of the game, he was choking the game away, and ain't nobody had nothing to say about it because they won. And that's the problem with a lot of the fans. All they mm-hmm. care about. Is the end result? They don't care how you play. When we talk about well, how did Matt Ryan play in the Super Bowl? They can care less if he threw for a thousand yards in that game. All they gonna come down to is what did he win? What did he win? That's all they gonna say. <laughs> or or or, or uh, sound like yeah. somebody here said. Somebody here said he freezes up when it counts. Fuck them stats. Let me say something to you, bro. You right. He doesn't have the Super Bowl. But you do realize the Super Bowl is one game, right? I mean, Nick Foles won the Super Bowl MVP for God's sake. How do you freeze up when your team literally gave up twenty-seven points in a quarter? Like, and that was his like, first like, Super Bowl, and he and he damn near played phenomenal. Just imagine if he actually won the Super Bowl. See, that was his first Super Bowl for him to actually do that over Tom Brady. You outplayed see, Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. You outplayed your Tom. first Super Bowl. Oh, okay. Okay. That man right. one good quarter. Yeah. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Let me say this. Hold on, K Style. Hold on. Let's get this out first. All right. I want to debunk the narrative that he choked in the second half of the ball. All right. I, I'm, this is going to debunk the idea that he did not get the job done. The When you look at the second half of that game, the Falcons only had the the ball, the possessed the ball, I believe it was three or four times the entire fourth quarter. They controlled the clock the entire fourth quarter. Okay? Go back and watch the game. He did not have an opportunity to choke it away. So the idea that he didn't score, you got to have the dang on ball. Hello. Hold on. Let me let me say let me let me say something just to help that debunk. Cause remember, we did a show like this a couple weeks ago, and I rewatched that whole entire Super Bowl. I'm gonna ask it. I'm gonna ask a lot of the Falcons, man. Have y'all really went back and watched that Super Bowl? No. 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 I'm fin- I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to see. I get some yeses or noes in in the comment section. Yes or no? Have y'all actually went back? And watch that Super Bowl. They have it. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm waiting. It. I'm, I'm, oh, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting on them. <clears throat> okay. So, I did it on the show last time. If you looked at the Falcons' last three possessions, two, two of those possessions was in field goal range. What happened in those possessions? So I'm gonna ask people that. What happened in those possessions? Mm. Don't want, they don't want to know. They don't want to know. <laughs> they don't want to know. You're talking to some new yeah, Falcons fans I'm, and I'm some help, old ones. So, so it's gonna be a little slow. No, no. Somebody gonna say, no. but we still lost. 
That's all no, they care no, about. No. We lost the game. No, 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 no. But, but, but like I said, this, but this is what this is what I'm saying though. I want y'all to do some homework. I want y'all to go look at the last three, four Dude, possessions funny. of that Super Bowl. Cause I went, I spent a whole weekend looking at this. You had, I don't know, three possessions. Let me let me count them. three possessions. Two of them was in field goal range. They lost field position because of penalties. That's one thing. Devontae Freeman missed the block on another one. one touchdown. <laughs> Which one? That was a touchdown. <laughs> so if you could say he got sat, but even when he got sat, they were still in field goal range. How did you get there? You gotta, yeah, you gotta look how to get there because, like, like you said, even if he got sacked in the Super Bowl, they were still in field goal range. But what happened when they were right there? Those holding calls, the false starts, not the amount of field goal range. You gotta remember when you're put in a third and 20 situation, the defense already know what you're going to do. Um, hey. the, uh, the other aspect you need to look at is James White caught 15 passes. That's a Super Bowl record for receptions in the Super Bowl. James White caught 15 passes. What does that tell you? He dumped they dumped the whole game. They dinked and dumped the Falcons in the second half. So Everybody can put it all on Matt Ryan, but at the end of the day, you have to look at the whole totality. See, the reason they don't want to look at the whole totality because it goes against their narrative of I want Matt Ryan out here so badly. That's the narrative. That's the narrative of the AJCs. That's the narrative of Fox Sports. That's the narrative of certain guys that be doing here, like you said, the DL Lado Land Matters. Uh, you got certain guys like Terrence Moore and all them folks like that. They don't want Matt Ryan here in Atlanta for any reason because Michael Vick is what they want. Now, people talking about I'm going to be traumatized if I go back and watch the game. Hey, I sat through a whole weekend and watched it twice. I'm fine. I was drunk as hell, but I was fine. <laughs> but that, but that, that goes on to what we were saying. That's what goes on. The, the narrative that Matt Ryan choked it away. You can't choke anything away if you don't have the opportunity. The yeah, time of possession right. in the second half. I think they had, like I said, I think they may have five possessions in the entire, you know, the um, the entire second half. Maybe mm -hmm. five possessions. Yeah. They had, they, had they had four possessions, about four possessions in the second half. And that tells oh, you everything. That tells you everything. That tells you everything that you need to know. The fact that he, you know, that he blew the game. Like how you, you got to have opportunities to be able to blow a game. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, that's 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 where it all come down to, man. We got to stop with these narratives. And it, it it's it's up to you know platforms like this to teach and tell people these things that they may not know because we got guys and you know you know the D Orlando Ledbetters and a lot of the content creators, not just him, not to you know point him out, single him out. Um yeah. like it's just like I said, people are not informed. They feel as though that Matt Ryan just did it and they don't have it, them, nobody puts the information out that say, "Look, the Falcons only had the ball two or three times in the second in the fourth quarter. That's it. Right. That's not enough to get anything going. And then, like you said, we had the ball in scoring position, and we decided we wanted to damn pass the ball. <laughs> you feel me? Yep. What you got, Rob? <laughs> Rod look like he's depressed over there, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I was <laughs> I was gonna answer your question about you know what do you think you know the new regime would be? Uh 
I think Arthur Smith and them already got it figured out. And I think they're going to go back to the well-balanced offense that we've known since, since Matt Ryan came into the league up until like 2013 and 14, because that's when, when we started to get like the different offensive coordinators and the head coach and the whole coaching staff changed because I think, well, I know for a fact back then where we were, when we had Michael Turner, you know, he's right behind K styles running. When we had Michael Turner, it was, we were more like a run, even though we had like Roddy white, Julio, Tony Gonzalez, don't get me wrong. Like we, we were still like, we could still pass whenever the hell we want, but we were still like a run first team because even then, like when, you know, Michael Turner started to slow down eventually, that's when we could like, you know, pass the ball, pass the ball, pass the ball. Even then, Matt Ryan wasn't throwing that throwing that much as he's throwing now. He wasn't throwing a whole lot back then. That's why I was like, it's going to be, I'm hoping it's going to be a bit of a balance. And I'm sure they probably watched old tape and say like, okay, look, we bring in Mike Davis. That's somewhat similar like a Michael Turner. It may not be exactly, but hey, look, we're going to run it down people's throats. And we're going to bring more bit of a balance how they used to run it where, hey, we still got Calvin Ridley. We still got Pitts. <clears throat> we still got, uh, I mean, we still got a bunch of weapons. We still got a bunch of weapons still. So we, we still going to have that ability to throw the ball whenever, but we're still going to be a run first heavy team. I think the main objective, what they're trying to do as far as keeping Matt Ryan, you know, longevity, because, I, he, I still think he has plenty more years to play. They're gonna, they're gonna limit his, you know, limit him throwing a whole lot because these past couple of seasons he's been throwing a little too much, and it's been proven because look at the running backs that we had over the years. When Devontae Freeman started to slow down, guess what he had to do? We had to throw that ball, keep throwing and keep throwing it. Guess who we had before that? Steven Jackson. Another burnt out running back from <laughs> from the Rams. He couldn't get the job done. He only had like what 500, 600, seven yards rushing yards. So guess what? He Matt Ryan had to still sling that ball, keep throwing and keep throwing. So I think they're gonna try to limit on how much he throws this season. I think that's what they're really gonna try to work on because that that should be a goal because he shouldn't be throwing as much as he he should be throwing especially when we're in big leagues as we've been in the past you know couple seasons and then all of a sudden we we're we're blowing leads and he still gotta throw the ball just to you know keep up you know what i'm saying like it's it's, it's a whole lot on him and it's wearing down in that arm so you know it's we got to go back to that balance we got to go back to that 2008 2012 memo and just run the ball and have him throw a lot less it's stats go like i said we always talk about his stats go look it up from 2008 from 2012 he's been throwing a little bit less because we had a running game that was so fluent because michael turner when he came in the league or not came in the league but when he came to atlanta from the Chargers, his first season he had like almost 1700 yards matt ryan didn't have to do that much so it's like y'all just gotta look it up you know Hold Go on. ahead, K-Styles. I, I got something for y'all here. Remember when we used to, like, like you just said about uh, Matt Ryan and Michael Turner, the burner, and running the ball, right? Do you know what will help him get to where he need to get back in? I just looked some stuff up. Did you know in them playoff years, the tight ends, and the running backs have averaged in each of those years almost 125 receptions for 1,230 yards. Running backs, tight ends, receiving. Because if you look back at that Super Bowl year, Tevin Coleman and Devontae Freeman had 85 receptions combined for over 800 and some yards. That's those two. So it's not so much as not it's not so much as him throwing the ball. That's the problem. The problem is we don't get the running backs. In.
Yeah, you just don't get the run. Okay, back we back. back. Like, yeah, yeah, you good. Okay. And to the to the real zero chin, I hear him talking about his Panthers. We still whooping that ass this year anyway. So um don't think we ain't seen that. <laughs> but go ahead. I did want to make that point right quick. No, you're right. That, that's all I gotta say about that. Um, I don't know if GGG just posted Matt Ryan's record, but it says 116 wins, 74 losses. <laughs> I don't know if that I don't know if that's is if that's Matt Ryan's stats. I don't know what stat that is, but I think when I was talking about Matt Ryan and all that, I think that's what he was referring to. Yeah, I didn't I didn't see it. Is he he already got it up here like that? Uh yeah, it already passed already, but yeah, that's that's all I gotta say about that. I, I just think we can go back to the more balanced. The real, real balance offense. That's what I'm hoping. Right. Right. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with it being balanced. the The real issue is coaching. You can have 500, you know, passing yards, uh, passing attempts, and 500 rushing attempts. But if you got it all in the same, like in the first first half of the season, like if you pass the ball more than you ran the ball and then towards the end of the year, you ran the ball more than you passed the ball. Like that's a, like that right there is balance. I think that's what the Falcons have missed. It's not so much that Matt Ryan passing the ball a lot. It's just like, he always has to pass the ball when we, like when we need to come back, like we're always that's true. behind. Yeah. So he, to, he always so like, I, I think it's more so coaching when you should pass the ball. Like we rely on him all the time to bring us back in games instead of just get fans out of those situations. So, like, that's what we mean by having the right coach. Because, like, under Dirk Cutter, when we down, Matt Ryan has to, and we're down most of the time, so he has to, you know, he has to throw the ball a lot more. So I think it's more so, you know, having, you know, that, 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 that creativity, and like even when K Style brought up the numbers as far as like the, you know, there's no difference between the you know the you know the passing attempts and the pass receptions with the tight ends and the running backs. It's not so much the numbers. Like at the end of the year, everybody has close to similar numbers. But the difference is that when are those numbers when you're down versus you're up? And I think that's what the Falcons are missing. Like you can't consistently have Matt Ryan in those high pressure moments. You know, like we need that defense to be able to, you know, take the pressure off him and, and you know, take the pressure off him, to be honest. Like that's really what it comes down to. We always depend on Matt Ryan to bring us, you know, to get us out of those situations. When we just need to stay out of the damn situation just by having a damn defense. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Hey, hey, I'm about to say your boy Mark Five Hundred Four talking about us choking and shit. Um, if I remember correctly, um, we didn't we didn't ask for no petition to replay a game. He been talking reckless through this whole night. I've, I've been just laughing at him, but oh, Mike, oh, wait, a yeah, not, go ahead, not, go ahead. Mike, not saying five hundred attempts is a bad. Is, is bad for Matt Ryan. I think that's actually pretty solid for him. It's just when he gets over the 600 attempts, it's kind of like, okay, this is a bit much. That's, even that's not true. Like, that's what I'm saying. It matters when you're getting those. Because if you're up, like, let's just say, like, if you if, if the game is close and you constantly have to rely on him, those attempts are going to look much worse than versus when it's like, like, like I said, in the first, like, let's say in the first five games, you run the ball well, and then your running back get hurt. You know what I'm saying? You pass right. the ball through in the first eight games, and then your running back end up getting hurt, and then you got to pass the ball a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Versus you got 600, you know, 600, 900 attempts in the entire season. So, like, it matters when you you know when you're able to pass the ball versus 
having those complete numbers. Like that's why I say numbers can lie. You got to look at when you're getting. That's what the coaching comes in the hand because yep, I was getting ready. Yep, that be coaching too because it's like at times you don't really need the freaking passes. You could just exactly. Run that that's that's exactly what I'm getting. That's exactly because when you see Matt Ryan, like we we up like two three scores in the fourth quarter, and then we like one and out of why the hell is that not handing the ball off to uh why all of a sudden not in the game right now like. He's not even in the damn game. You got running backs and you standing passing the damn ball. Like those are the things we're talking about coaching and being able to use, you know, guys like DJ and not like why DJ and not not in certain situations where he's sh- like he's shown that he's a good run defender. And then we have run defense situations and you still you don't you don't have the guy. So it's coaching in, in those moments that matters. What gets these players, you know, get the most out of these players. So that's that's what we mean by that. So numbers can't lie. Okay, numbers can't lie. Right, um, right, right. Elementary <laughs> football situation for awareness. We continuously talk about that year in and year out. That's the reason we won four games last year. Because all of them games, mainly that we lost early in the season against the Bears. Against the Lions, where we scored a touchdown and lost the game, where we could have kneeled and kicked the field goal to win the game. Situational awareness. Not picking up the football on onside kicks, not knowing that you can touch the football. It's a live football. That's coaching. That's not players. That's not on the players. And we continuously talk about this year in and year out. And that's why I say this is going to be a playoff team this year. This Falcons team in year one under Arthur Smith, and you heard Ju say it first, and you guys can write it down, <laughs> keep the receipts. I said it. This Falcons team will be a playoff team in year one. And the reason I say that, unless Matt Ryan knock on wood go down with a serious injury, because there is caveat, you know, there is a caveat with what I'm saying. But if Matt Ryan is the starting quarterback for 16 games, he's upright. And as long as Arthur Smith don't do a Bobby Petrino and leave in the middle of the night, we're going <laughs> to be in the playoffs this year. Right. Mark it down. I said we're going to be at least a wild card team because we're not going to lose those those eight games that we lost last season. As K Styles talked about, a one possession game, we're going to win those games. What y'all were talking about, throwing the ball when you should be running the clock out because we have the lead. All of those games we lost last year, mainly we had the lead in the Super Bowl. Yeah. We had a twenty eight to three lead. We had a 90, 99.9 chance to win the it's game. It's funny. It's we funny now. <laughs> Yeah, the I'm reason right, we lost the game now. is because we didn't hand the ball. We could have literally kneeled the ball, kneeled the ball, kneeled the ball, honey. Kneeled the ball, kneeled the and ball. And how many games ball, we could have done that, honestly, game. and, and, and turned those that. losses to wins? We could have literally did that in the Super Bowl and won the game. What ended up yep. happening? Freeman misses. We should have been running the ball anyway, but Freeman, running play action, runs out for a pass instead of blocking. What happened? Zeus high tower. Strip sack fumble. They get the ball on like our 20 or 30 yard line in scoring range. But you could have drained more clock. All you had to do, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, run it, continue to make them go 80, 70 plus yards. It's, it wasn't enough time for them to come back. We lost that game because of coaching, not understanding clock management, situational awareness, point blank in the period. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Yeah. I miss everything. My baby, she's not feeling good. Let's pray. It's nothing. But uh, I'm feeling fine, Reggie. I'm good. It's my birthday still. It's my birthday month. My birthday was June 4th, and I'm celebrating. Um, yeah, y- but, y'all, know how the, y'all know how the ladies do. They party the whole yeah, month. Yeah, we party the whole mm. month. So if y'all want a cash app or donate, I appreciate it. Um Go show some love to Miss Maggie T. <laughs> yeah, but I got a little sick baby right about now, so I had to go take care of that. But uh, oh, what okay. I miss, I know we get any ready no. to come on, on a two no. hour no. production. Are we wrapping it no. up or no. what I miss? No, I would, I would just, I would just gonna bring up, um, uh, say if you got, if you know any Saints fans that talking shit, all you got to do is bring up the petition that they tried to sue the NFL over that championship game. Then make sure y'all look that up, man. Look. <laughs> 
I'm glad I'm, I'm mad I'm not on my uh, my other laptop because boy I, I had I had the paperwork and everything on there I gotta download it over here we're getting ready for the damn games this man, year nobody thinking about no damn Saints man no no I just you know no 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 I'm just, no, I'm just trying to try to get um you know your boy Marco Five you know uh Maggie's crush is in here talking shit. <laughs> Well, he's going to calm down a little bit because she she back on the screen now because he was acting the fool. Since you've been gone, he's been acting the fool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He talking about uh, sit your father. Boy, motherfucker, you couldn't even count the 10 cent, motherfucker. Hey, you hey, 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 no, We ain't going to go there. We ain't going to go there. I'm not even entertaining. He's been, he been going bug wild yeah. the whole he, time tonight. You know, I guess he got time today, people. So... Everybody got kung fu fighting. Let's go ahead and um, I guess let's do our last minutes, people. Let's get on out of here because we're getting around to go on two hours, and I know people got to get up and go to work in the morning. But this is the last of that Julio Jones talk, though. Like I'm done. Oh, I'm tired of it. Oh, well, it's for me. It is. You can continue. <laughs> he ain't he ain't Atlanta Falcons no more. So what's the point of talking about him? Hopefully. You know they still can bring it up. Oh yeah, well, but. It's 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 finally over. It's over. Now he can go to Tennessee and hide in the mountains. Okay, uh, but hey, man. Um, I guess we'll just get into the last uh, takes for everybody. Um, you know, K style. You want to you want to go, bro? Oh, like, like I said, we, like I said, at the end of the day, we just appreciate everybody tuning in, regardless. Or who your affiliation is with, because this is what Atlanta Falcon Nation is about. Main thing is nobody's disrespectful. Like you said, you make sure you follow everybody's handles. Uh, I know they're gonna plug their own stuff, but I want to have the courtesy to plug everybody else's stuff too. So <laughs> you got Mad My Sports. I know most of y'all following him. Um, you got Utah Sports all the way on the other side of the screen. Y'all make sure y'all follow that. Miss Maggie T, that's the Atlanta Hawks queen down there. Ain't no other woman doing Hawks content but her. Make sure y'all follow her. And if y'all on Twitch, you see the guy right below me. Mr. J Rock for Life, the Twitch God, the Twitch gamer. You got whatever you need. And make sure you follow Just K Styles, six away from 300. 706 from a thousand. You know how that you know how we do it. We're taking it one day at a time. Absolutely. What you got? What you got? Do, 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 do. I just want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. As always, your boy Ju Talk Sports. Go over and hit that like, subscribe button, AFN, Mad Mike Sports, everybody on the panel, Twisted Torch TV, who was on earlier with us. Y'all go hit that like, subscribe button. Uh, Wednesday night, you guys know I had my first, what's the word, Dirty Bird, episode two coming this Wednesday night. We're going to be talking about not just Julio Jones, but we said we kind of done with talking about Julio Jones, but we're going to talk about the results, meaning y'all think Julio Jones is going to be able to win a championship in Tennessee, and will the Falcons be able to win a championship without Julio Jones? That's going to be the topic that we're going to be talking about, or one of the topics we're going to be hitting on. Because that's what Julio Jones stated. He wants to win. So do you guys think he's going to be able to win? That's something for you guys to think about for the next two days before I have my show. Personally, I'm just going to give you all a little tidbit. I don't see it happening. I don't see Julio Jones. <laughs> I don't see Julio, Julio Jones winning the Super Bowl. But no, no, we're going to no. see. We're going to see. But with that being said, you guys continue to tune in. we got a lot more content coming for you guys. We appreciate you guys always tuning in here. We're going to give you guys the stats, the facts, and the truth in that positive Atlanta Falcons talk. With that being said, I'm going to kick it over to J-Rock. Uh, real quick, uh, Toxic Falcon, uh, I did see you type in what's my Twitch. I'm going to drop everything in the chat. Um, I do appreciate you guys uh, watching and tuning in. Make sure you guys follow everybody, like, and subscribe to everybody on this panel. Make sure you guys also follow Atlanta Falcon Nation on Twitch. Not just myself, but follow. I did see somebody that was on Twitch. They typed in here, but appreciate you tuning in. Make sure you guys follow that channel. I'm going to drop 
my channel, my gaming channel, and Atlanta Falcon Nation's channel. And then make sure you guys follow the Discord. I'm dropping all the good links in the chat. So make sure you guys join Discord, follow me on my gaming channel, and then follow Atlanta Falcon Nation on Twitch as well. Uh, who, who my pat Mike? Hey, I, hell, you know, I'm hell. I'm still Curry. I shoot that bit from left here. Don't matter me. <laughs> um, hey, um, as a matter of fact, why I just said that? I'm gonna just, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I, I was gonna, you know, plug the file and stuff, but let me, let me. Hey man, let me dribble between my legs. Hey, I, I, I gotta shout these boys out, man. This is what happens when you don't give the underdogs the proper respect of being players. This is what happens when you ignore and you bully people that you thought that wasn't no good. This is the results that you get. And you still, all right. Even though uh, I, I saw the little punk tweet, a uh, little punk comment that um, Ben Simmons had talking about, I just want to beat up the little guy. Like, if they let me, I'm going to beat him up. Like, y'all trying everything to, like, pick on a guy. Why? Because he's smaller than you? He's just a damn baller when it comes down to it. Y'all trying to get physical. Y'all trying to, like, what y'all trying to do, y'all trying to bully the guy. And that's not basketball. Like, that's why, you know, the Detroit, you know, the Pistons, you know, the their style of play wasn't, you know, it, it, it's rightfully banned because it's not even about basketball. Y'all just hate the man just to be hating him. And Trey out there balling. He's smiling in your face. He's dribbling. He's nutmegging you. He's shooting threes from half court. He, he Look, y'all thinking trapping him is going to work, and that, that crap don't work. So now y'all trying to – y'all trying to bully him. Y'all trying to bully him. So the fact of the matter is, y'all got your butts whipped, and you just have to deal with it. Y'all thought the Hawks was a joke, and this is what happened. The Hawks ran y'all out of y'all own freaking, to, uh, your own hometown. Like, we're talking about, we went up there and put them up, you know, had them dudes down 20 points. Had them down 20 points. 20 freaking points in your home. You're the number one seed. So all this hating on Trey, I don't even know why y'all hating on the dude. Because he's talking. That's what you're supposed to do in basketball is talk crap. So I just got to give a shout out to these hogs. Bogey. John Collins is growing up before mine. Y'all know I've been critical of him. John Collins balling. Clint Capella going up against the best center in the league and 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 um Joel Embiid. He playing some nice defense. So when it all comes down to it, the Falcons could be in the very same boat. Nobody is giving the Falcons any type of love, no type of respect. And the last time that happened, even the fans gave up on them. They said, oh, the Falcons weren't going to do anything. I've even heard people say they're going to win one game because they got rid of Julio Jones. So when I'm telling you, when you start bullying people, you start bullying teams, you don't give them a shot, this is what happens. You get a Trey Young busting your ass. And I'm telling you, NFL right now, y'all keep disrespecting the Falcons. You disrespecting Matt Ryan. He going to bust y'all ass and y'all going to see our ass in the Super Bowl and you really going to be hurt. So that's all I got to say about that, man. Check us out, Atlanta Falcons Nation. All right, on our way to 2K. And that's all I got to say about that. Miss Maggie, what you want to do? I got pretty much, y'all yeah, already on, you know, shout out all the channels, subscribe to everybody. Atlanta Falcons Nation, please get us to 2K before the season. That's what I really want. I truly want 2K before we get to the season 2K. because guess what? We finna have all kinds of, you know, all the donations that's been coming in. We ain't forgot about y'all. We mm -hmm. we bringing it back for the season. We're gonna do some prizes. We're gonna have guests on on Friday nights. Just get that in your head. Friday nights is for the fans. Any other day, mm -hmm. we don't do it. So just always remember, Friday night madness is 
our day that we allow the fans to come on and show their appreciation. So hit me up with that link of my email and message me. That's how we're going to properly get on the show from now on because, look, we be having looking like the Brady Bunch with everybody on here. We be having drunk <laughs> folks on the show. It'd be, it be a, a whole mockery when we have Friday night. So we're going to control it a little bit better. You got to properly request to be on, okay? Other than that, look, we appreciate all our fans, though, for real. I've been seeing y'all shouting us out, but let's let's be respectful as well. I know y'all on other content creator stuff, but mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Just be careful with that. We appreciate it, but look, we don't need no advertisement. We are a lot of Falcons right. nation. We are exactly. the nation, pretty much. So exactly. <laughs> we appreciate exactly. y'all loyalty, though. You know, but that's all I got to say on this one. Um, guess we're just gonna go ahead and end, and I gotta go take care of my baby girl. What you got, K Styles? <sighs> I'm gonna make this one quick. Um, uh, Max Kellerman is on some bullshit now. Um, did y'all hear what he said today? <laughs> this dude, this dude said Luka Doncic is the best basketball player in the world. <laughs> Man, I, I, I wouldn't say in the world, but yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm, I think he's the most complete. I, he is the most complete, right? Player in the world. Like I but, don't think it's Kawhi. Like I don't disagree with that. I think Luca. He just doesn't like. He doesn't. He hasn't learned. He's like Trey right now. He hasn't learned how to close game. Like I don't think there's anybody better than Luca right now. Even LeBron. I think LeBron is pretty Ooh. much. He's still on his own. Like I think he's still on his own little. I'm LeBron type of issue. But I, I no, agree. no, no, but no, but here's the thing: he didn't base it on skill. That this is what I'm getting at. He wasn't basing it on skill. He just said it was the fact that everybody was hurt. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> yeah, I was getting ready to say what. <laughs> yeah, so he, so he was saying since Kevin Durant's been hurt this year, LeBron's been hurt this year, uh, Russell Westbrook's been hurt this year, that automatically makes Luka Doncic oh, the know best what? player in the I, world. I see where he's going. I actually agree. He's the best player because everybody's been hurt. I, I, I can kind of see where he's going with that. But, uh, hey, man, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm team trade. Fuck it. Get everybody else off the train. That's that's where I'm at. Yeah, right. I don't care about nobody else. Hey, but I'm but I'm just but but I'm just I'm just gonna leave it at it like this. <laughs> <laughs> because basketball is a whole nother beast. It, it, it's up for interpretation, even more so than uh, football. Like you can exactly. say anybody the best in the league. So like it, it really is just up for interpretation, man. Like I oh, said, yeah. I, I think Trey, I think Trey is up there. I'll tell you something like this. Trey need to keep playing the damn villain. You see the background? You see that floater right there? You see hey, that man. floater? <laughs> you see I'm that floater? Trey the background. Floater. I love it. I love it. I love it. Like, yeah, um, it, he, what this fan saying is um, how the team was hurt. But guess what? Oh, look, they look, navigated look. right through that. <laughs> and it was hey, no excuse because we was had a lot of players out. We still it was still a game that we had to play, and everybody right. stepped up when they needed to. So exactly. we got there how we should have. And now that everybody's healthy, they could really be scared of the Hawks. Yeah. Hey, look, look at the comment. He said, Quavo, please leave Trey alone. <laughs> please, yeah, leave him alone. <laughs> Quavo, all the amigos, get get away. Stay away from they, our Atlanta they need, they need to be banned. They need to be banned from all Atlanta sporting events. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't gonna have no Damn, that's stars. How, that's how you feel for real. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Because just as soon as they get caught up with that, they just be celebrities and divas and stuff. We don't need no Trey Young, the diva. We don't need no. Think? We don't need another Julio. That's what he's saying. Exactly. Exactly. Once Julio started, once Julio started hanging out with them, everything <laughs> changed. Julio you know, in videos and everything. Like I'm about, to, I'm about to say, Quavo couldn't even keep his own woman in check. He don't need to be around these foot these, these wow, damn wow, basketball wow, players. Wow. <laughs> on that note, <laughs> on that note. <laughs> 
let's go ahead and wrap it up. <laughs> Check out um Jew Talk Sports show on Wednesday on AFN and Jew Talk Sports what channel. The word, dirty bird. What the word, dirty bird. And of course, depending on what happens, we may or may not be back Tuesday night. But if not, check it out Wednesday. And we out of here, people. Hit that subscribe, like, share, everything. Get us to 2K. Like I said, we appreciate you guys. Some donations. We got you. We're coming back with some prizes and giveaways for the season. Because guess what? New regime, baby. It's time to get going. Let's talk about it. Who's the next man up? Let's go. But yeah, peace, people. Yeah. And the Hawks play tomorrow, y'all. Let's get it. And we out. Threes.